In the previous video, you've learned that binary searching is much faster than linear search. But for this to work, data in your array must be sorted. In this module, I'm going to discuss some of the basic sorting algorithms to sort data items in an array. Let's start with the bubble sort. Bubble sort is one of the most popular basic sorting algorithms out there. It is simple, easy to understand, and is commonly used for educational purposes. However, it is seldom used in an actual implementation due to its slow performance. Bubble sorting algorithm has a time complexity of O n squared, or quadratic. Let's take a look how it works. Suppose we have an array with five elements. You start off by comparing the first element of your array to the second element. If the first element is greater than the second element, then swap its content. Otherwise, do nothing. Next is to do this exact same process but this time, comparing the second to the third element. If the second element is greater than the third element, then swap its content. Otherwise, do nothing. The goal is to do this repeatedly until the biggest element floats or bubbles up to the rightmost position in your array. After finishing the first set of iteration, you have to repeat this entire process again, starting from the first element, but only up to the second to the last element. You must not include the last element because it is already the biggest, and there's no use of comparing it further. Do this again, but only up to third to the last element. And for one last time, only up to the fourth to the last element. You have to do this repeatedly until there's nothing left to compare. It only means that the element in your array is already sorted. Now, let's check it in code. I'll start by declaring an array of five elements and display each element using a for each loop. Then, I'll wait for the user to press the enter key before performing the bubble sort. Using the for loop, I'll use variable j and initialize it to zero to refer it to the first element of my array and perform this loop until the last element minus one, meaning for a five element array, I'll loop four times. Then inside this loop, I'll compare two consecutive elements starting from the first and second elements, represented by index j and index j plus 1. If the left element is bigger than the right, then swap the elements. Otherwise, do nothing. Swapping the content of two array cells require an additional variable to hold the temporary value of the element. To do this, I'll declare a temporary variable and assign a content of the first cell. I can now replace the content of the first cell with the content of the second cell. And finally, I'll get the content of the 10th variable, which came from the first cell, and assign it to the second cell. Just for illustration purposes, I'll display the new content of the array and put a console read line here for you to see how swapping occurs for every iteration. Let's run the code. Notice that after finishing the first set of iteration, 14 bubbled up to the rightmost position after 4 iterations. Now, let's go back in our code and implement the rest of the iterations. As explained before, we need to repeat this entire process, but for the second time, the comparison is only up to the second to the last element. And then, for the third time, it's only up to the third to the last element. Having this pattern, I'll refactor this code and place it inside another loop. Now, this outer loop will dictate how many times this inner loop must be performed. And for that, I'll use a variable i and initialize it to the array size minus 1. Then, have it loop repeatedly as long as i is still greater than 0 by decrementing this i variable by 1 for every iteration. Then, I'll modify the inner loop's condition since I don't want to repeat this loop 4 times every time comparing up to the last element, but rather decreasing the number of comparison after every set of iteration. And for that, I'll use this variable i as the value of i decreases for every iteration, so as the range of the inner loop. I'll just place a next line here for you to distinguish each set of iteration. And finally, I'll display a final content of the array after performing the sorting algorithm. Let's run the code. As you can see, it took four iterations to bubble up element 14 for the first set of iteration, then three loops for the second set, then two loops for the third set, and just one pass for the fourth set before displaying the final array content that is already sorted. 
although this algorithm is quadratic in nature, meaning if I have an array of five elements, then worst case scenario of time complexity for this is to have an outer loop with five iterations multiplied by the inner loop with five iterations as well, or simply five squared, producing a total of 25 iterations. But for our code implementation, we managed to reduce it to only 10 iterations. Also, you might notice in our sample output simulation that even though the array is already sorted, it still needs to finish the entire loop, thus making extra unnecessary iterations without really accomplishing anything. To make our implementation a bit more efficient, I'll add some codes to it. I'll check if the array is already sorted so that I don't have to finish the entire loop and break out of it right away. But how do we know if the array is already sorted? Well, inside the inner loop, if it finishes it without any swapping happened, it means the array is already sorted. So with that concept in mind, I'll add a Boolean variable is sorted and initialize it to true. Then inside the swap, if conditional block, if swapping happens, even once, I'll set this to false, meaning array is not yet sorted. And outside this inner loop, I'll create a condition that checks if is sorted, then I'll break out of the outer loop and display the sorted array right away. I'll modify the given array elements and set it to almost sorted, just to show you my point. Let's run the code. Notice that 100 bubbles up for the first set of loop with four iterations. During the second set of loop, it finishes it in three iterations, but no swapping happened at all, meaning the array is already sorted. Thus, the loop terminates and display the final sorted array. And this is how you implement a bubble sorting algorithm. Now, it's your time to code.